Okay, let's take a moment to talk about binary logical operators. These are the AND and the OR operator. We use them when creating compound if statements. So, most of the examples that we've done in the basic JavaScript videos have all been about if a number is equal to a certain value, or if a number is less than a certain value, or greater than, or greater than equal to. But there's going to be times where you can't just do an if, else if, else. You need to ask multiple questions at the same time. So if a number is between other numbers, so you've got a range of numbers. So if it's greater than 10 and less than 20, or if it's less than 10 or greater than 20. So if it's something that's outside the range 10 to 20 or inside the range 10 to 20. So I'm going to do an example here using AND and OR, and what I'm going to use as my example is I've got an array of ingredients. I'm going to be making sandwiches. So I've got a variable called ingredients where I can change this for each of my different tests. I've got a function called sandwich has, and it's going to return true or false based on whether or not the ingredient that I pass in is included in this list of ingredients. Now this is a little bit um, expanded code. You wouldn't have to write this much code to do this, but I think it illustrates the example well. So I'm doing a for of loop. I'm going to loop through each one of these and I'm going to look at lettuce, cheddar, ham, or whatever the ingredients are, and I'm going to compare them to the value that's passed into this function to see if lettuce matches the ingredient, cheddar matches the ingredient, ham matches the ingredient. If one of those matches, I'm going to return true. And if I get all the way through and I haven't found a match, I'm going to return false. Now, I'm putting this last line in the function, return false, as the comment says here, simply because if you don't put a return statement on a function, the function by default will return the value undefined, which is also considered a falsy value. So I'm putting this here purely for clarity's sake. It doesn't have to be there. The function will still do the exact same thing. So a basic if statement. I'm going to be putting my function call inside of here. So I can check to see if sandwich has cheddar. And if it does, I'm going to write this line out. Sandwich has cheese. Okay, we run this. There we go. Sandwich has cheese. If I put an else condition in here, and I'm going to put in a different kind of cheese just for testing's sake. There we go. So the no cheese statement. So I tested something that didn't exist in this list and I got this message. Now, moving on to the AND OR operators. So I want to know if the sandwich has, let's say, um, ham or some other kind of cheese, or some other kind of meat rather. So if I'm going to test to see if the sandwich has ham. I also want to know if it's got chicken or beef. So these are the three things that I want to test. So sandwich is ham, sandwich is chicken, sandwich is beef. Now I can't just write the three conditions. This is like putting if it's greater than 10, space, if it's greater than 20, space, if it's less than 30. You can't just write the different conditions. There has to be something in between. So. I want to do this test, and I want to do this test. But do I want both these things to be true, or only one of them to be true? And that's really the determining factor with AND and OR. I'm going to use OR. And then in between these last two, I'm going to put OR as well. So I'm testing this. If this is true, the if statement stops and jumps into here and says, yep, we're good. So ham, chicken, beef. If it's got ham, it's going to stop at this point. doesn't need to test anymore. It's going to jump down here because I said or. So if this is true or something else, well, I know that this is true, so I can move on. If I run this code, there we go. Sandwich does have meat. 
what if I remove this and replace it with tomato? No meat. So it tried this. This got a false. So then I tried this. This got a false. And then I tried this one. This one also returned false. So because none of the three were true, it jumps into this second condition here. Now, if we want to test that it's got two things, and it has to have both, that's an and situation. So we can say if sandwich has, and let's look for lettuce and tomato, and I want it to have both, so I would put an and operator, the logical and operator in between these two things. There we are. So lettuce and tomato. Both of these things are going to be in there. There we are. We'll run this again. Okay, no meat in the first one. Second one, it has both. Now, down here, let's say I change tomato to onion and run this. I get this condition down here. So lettuce, yes, it does have that. So this first one is returning true. And it's going to test for onion. Now this is going to come back false. So this is true, this is false. They both have to be true for this to work. So we have a true and the second test gets run. This one failed, so because both were not true, we got this else statement running here. We can combine as many AND and OR operators as we want, so we can have a whole bunch of tests. If sandwich has... I'm going to check for cheddar. And sandwich has lettuce, or sandwich has onion. So what are we testing here? It reads it, the JavaScript interpreter is going to read this from left to right. It's going to check this one. Yes, this is true. And this is true. Then it hits an OR condition. Once it hits the OR condition, it said, okay, well, I know that both of these things are true, so I've met all the conditions that I have to. This isn't going to be an optional condition. So it's going to skip past this and do whatever is inside here. cheese and lettuce, or onion. So if I got rid of lettuce, replace that with um, ham, I'm not getting a statement here. So it didn't pass. We run that now. There we go, failed the final test. So cheddar was true. Lettuce failed. This was false. So because I didn't get both, the first thing after the end, this failed, so therefore it did not go through. Lettuce is gone. If we remove cheddar and replace it with onion, ham, onion, and tomato. All right. This is going to fail. And this is going to fail. So both of these failed. Then it looks at the or. Just like in the last one, this failed final test before I had replaced the cheddar with onion. It had the cheddar, it failed this, but it didn't have onion. So it failed both of these, and it also failed the condition on the other side of the OR statement. Now I'm going to fail cheddar, I'm going to fail lettuce, so it has to keep going. It goes to the OR condition, and onion, yeah, that's on the other side. It did work. I didn't have cheddar or lettuce, but I did have onion. So onion by itself was okay. If you want, you can always add more parentheses in your code. 
just for clarity's sake, for your own um, comfort level, we can wrap a set of parentheses around. And so it, it becomes obvious that I'm talking about both these things being true or just this one thing being true. We can add another condition in here. Sandwich has tomato. And then I know that, yes, this was true. This is also true. They both have to be true. So the two things on the left of the OR operator have to be true, or the two things on the right of the OR operator have to be true. It still included onion, it included tomato, both of those were true, so this is the part that's setting true. Now I could put onion in here as well. This is false, this is true, this is true, this is true. Two things on either side of the and, both have to be true. This one is, this one isn't. So the first half fails, we get to the or operator, we know that we're allowed to continue, and test the second two. And we know that we're good to go. So and and or, you can group them with parentheses, put as many brackets in there as you need to be clear to yourself about how you're comparing the multiple conditions. And that's it for compound if statements. Any questions, please leave them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.